chapter twenty seven of the forbidden way by george gibbs this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by tony oliva general bent the room at the hotel into which Cortland showed them was a part of general bent's own suite curtis janey and a doctor consulted near the window and a nurse from the hospital in her white linen uniform and cap hovered near jeff's questioning gaze sought the crack of the door of the darkened room adjoining i think you may go in mr bent said the doctor to Cortland. he's conscious at longer intervals now it looks very much more hopeful sir he still asks for mr ray Cortland followed the doctor into the sick room while janey joined jeff and camilla and waited will he get over it mr janey camilla asked softly oh i think so now we didn't at first only one side is affected he can even move the hand a little of course it may be a long time jeff listened in a daze the baby stare had come into his eyes again and it moved from one object in the room to another always returning to the door of the darkened room into which Cortland had vanished there was an odor of medicine the sound of crackling ice and now the murmur of voices a moment later one of the nurses appeared in the doorway mr ray she said you may come in and jeff entered passing Cortland, who stood with bowed head at the door in the darkness he could just make out the white figure of the old man propped up against the pillows he breathed with difficulty and jeff unused to scenes of sickness felt all his heart go out in pity for the helpless old man who was calling for him is he here the general murmured is he here jeff moved quietly around the bed to the chair which the nurse had placed for him yes sir he said huskily it's jeff the general's right hand groped feebly along the covers and jeff took it in both of his own court told me you wanted me sir i'm glad very glad he turned his head and tried to smile it was so so sudden the news he said with an effort to find out i'm sorry sir i didn't want you to know i'm glad to know it makes me happy i've been trying for so many years to find you you tried in astonishment yes i didn't know anything about about having a son until it was too late one of my associates in the west told me later i tried to find out where they had taken you but the nurse in the hospital had gone and there was no record of her or of of you he spoke with a great effort striving against the drowsiness which from time to time attacked him they did things differently in those days she your mother never mentioned my name we had had a quarrel a serious quarrel just after we were married married jeff leaned forward over the white coverlid toward the old man's distorted face you were married he whispered awe-stricken yes married jeff married i i have the papers at home i'll show them to you jeff bent his head suddenly over the old man's lean fingers and kissed them impulsively married he murmured thank god thank god for that the general's eyes followed him plaintively while he struggled for a breath yes it's true in topeka kansas that's what i wanted to tell you i couldn't go i couldn't die without letting you know that it didn't matter to her she could forget i did her 
a wrong but not a great wrong as i did you i've thought about you all these years jeff it's my secret i've kept it a long time he sank back into his pillows exhausted breathing heavily again and the doctor who had stood in the doorway came forward i think you had better rest general mr ray can come in later but the general resolutely waved him aside with a movement that suggested his old authority no not yet i'm better i'll sleep again in a moment and as the doctor withdrew the old man's grasp on jeff's hand grew tighter they took you away from the hospital without even giving you a name yes sir i had no name but the one they gave me jeff tried to make him stop talking but he went on striving desperately i had men working to try and find you i've their reports at home you shall see them i want you to know that i did all i could we got the name of the nurse mrs nixon i think uh, no he said confusedly i can't remember she disappeared yes sir she married again and went to texas she took me with her bent's eyes searched jeff's piteously that was it he whispered that was it that's my excuse i tried you know i tried don't you it has been my burden for years more even lately than when i was younger the wrong i had done you say that you understand won't you my my son the tears had come into jeff's eyes welled forth like the gush of water in a dry fountain and fell upon the old wrinkled fingers i do sir i do the general's hand left the coverlid and rested for a moment on jeff's shoulder i hoped you would i've always hoped you'd forgive me when you knew jeff straightened and brushed his eyes there's nothing to forgive i uh, i only want you to get well you will sir they say you're better yes jeff better better already but i'm very tired i think i think i can sleep now but don't go away don't go and he sank back in a state of coma general bent recovered the stroke was a slight one and he gained strength and the use of his faculties rapidly but time had served its notice of dispossession and they all knew that the hour had come when the management of bent's great business interests must pass to younger hands within a few weeks he was permitted to sit up for an hour each day and with cortland's help took up the loose ends of the most urgent business but he tired easily and it was evident to them all that the days of his activity were ended in spite of it all a great calm had fallen over the general's spirit the quick decision the incisive judgment were still his for one doesn't forget in a moment the habits of a lifetime of command but his tones were softer his manner more gentle and in his eyes there had dawned a soft light of toleration and benignity which became him strangely gladys who had come on from lakewood was with him constantly and watched these changes in her father with timid wonder he had never been one to confide in his children and it required some readjustment of her relations with him to accept the quiet appeal of his eyes and the sympathy and appreciation which she found in his newly begotten tenderness in cortland too she saw a great change and it surprised her to discover the resolute unobtrusive way in which he met his responsibilities both functional and moral jeff and camilla aware of their anomalous position 
had decided to leave the hotel and go back to mesa city as soon as general bent grew better it was cortland who prevailed on them to stay we're all one family now jeff he said firmly one and indivisible gladys and i are of a mind on that and father wishes it so your claim on him comes before ours we don't forget that we don't want to forget it jeff unable to reply only grasped him by the hand and then with larry's help the two of them plunged into the business of straightening out the tangle in the general's affairs and jeff's it was a matter of moment with cortland to give the sawatch short line a proper schedule at once and so by his dispensation on the twenty fifth of may as jeff had boasted he thought of it now trains were running from pueblo to sawatch the denver and western too restored its old schedule from kinney and the sawatch mountain development company resumed its business by really developing in the absence of his two sons camilla and gladys sat with the old man reading or talking to him as the fancy seized him to have them do he liked to lie on a couch at the window and look out toward the mountains beyond which jeff's interests lay while camilla told him of her husband's early struggles in the valley he questioned her eagerly often repeating himself while she told him of the watch us grow sign of the failure of mesa city and of its rejuvenescence perhaps after all the old man would sigh perhaps it did him no harm it makes me very happy child he didn't say what made him happy but camilla knew then there came a day when the general was pronounced out of all danger and capable of resuming a small share of his old responsibilities on that day new articles of partnership were drawn for the firm of bent and company into which jeff ray was now admitted the lone tree mine and the sawatch smelter figured in the transaction mrs cheyne who had a wise corner in her pretty head refused to accept the money which had been advanced to jeff ray and now insisted on bonds of the development company and stock in the short line lawrence berkeley whose peace had been made with curtis janey now became the western representative of the amalgamated reduction company with pete mulrennan as actual head of the mesa city plant it was from general bent that all of the plans emanated and curtis janey without difficulty succeeded in arranging matters in new york he took a sardonic pleasure in reminding the general that he had once suggested the advisability of using jeff's talents for the benefit of their company and accepted these plans as a slight tribute to his own wisdom general bent wanted to go up to mesa city to see the mine but it was thought best by the doctors to send him east to a lower altitude and so about the middle of june cortland took him to new york leaving jeff and camilla to stay for a while at mesa city where camilla could watch the building of glen irwin she could not find it in her heart to give up the west not altogether later on they would spend their summers there up in the mountains jeff's mountains End of chapter 27